Greetings guitar engineers, I'm Desi Serna, and in this video we're going to take a look at the strum pattern featured at the beginning of the song Wonderwall by Oasis. This is a very popular song among guitar lovers, but most players struggle to perform it correctly. This is because the song features a lot of syncopation, which is just a fancy way of saying that the chords change on irregular and unpredictable beats. In fact, of all the guitar songs I've taught over the years, Wonderwall ranks as one of the most difficult to play accurately. For this reason, I don't recommend this song to beginners. This song is best suited for intermediate level players and up who have lots of experience using open position chords to strum along with a variety of songs. For those of you that are ready for this level of playing, I'm going to break down the guitar part and show you how to play it correctly. By following my instruction here, you'll not only get a portion of this song down, but you'll learn important things that you need to know about music, rhythm, and strumming. Let's dive in. To begin, place a capo at the second fret on your guitar, and then play as if you were in the key of G, using the chords E minor, G, D, and A minor 7. Next, the music features a pedal tone technique where you fret and hold strings 1 and 2 at the 3rd fret. Use your 3rd and 4th fingers and keep them here for each chord. When you do this, the E minor becomes E minor 7, G is still just a G, D becomes D sus 4, and the A minor 7 becomes A7 sus 4. By holding the notes on strings 1 and 2 while the chords change, you create the sound of more complex and colorful chords. Keep in mind that we're thinking of the chord shape names as if the capo were not in use because that's what guitarists often do. Technically, with a capo at the second fret, the actual notes from the chords are F sharp minor 7, A, E sus 4, and B7 sus 4. But for this lesson, I'm going to refer to them simply as E minor, G, D, and A. Anyway, our focus here is on the rhythm, so let's take a close listen to it. I'm using a program to slow down the speed of the recording so we can better make out the rhythm. Here it is again at about 75% tempo. Now, unfortunately, I could not find accurate tablature online. The website sheetmusicdirect.com gets pretty close, but the music is notated differently from what I hear in the recording. Specifically, the rhythm is played differently here in the second measure compared to what I'm hearing in the recording. It sounds like the tablature at ultimateguitar.com actually got the rhythm right, However, there isn't any rhythmic notation or pick stroke indicators to help you put the actual strum pattern together. So, I notated this the way that I hear it, and in a way that I think is most helpful to see what's happening. Here in the slash notation, I have the actual rhythm. Above it are the chords and where they change. And then these arrows will indicate the pick strokes. And then finally, I have accents up here where you're going to dig into the strings a little bit harder, and this helps to define the strum pattern. The uh, pick strokes that are colored in red indicate where something changes with your fretting hand fingers. So here is where the E minor 7 chord begins. Here is where you switch your, chords to, uh, your fingers to G. Here's where you switch your fingers to D sus 4. You're going to lift a finger on this particular downstroke. I'll talk more about that later. Here's where you switch to A7 sus4, and you're going to lift a finger here before coming back to the beginning and placing your fingers on E minor 7. 
All right, so let's get started by focusing on just a portion of this pattern. Let me do that again. Okay, so with your fingers on E minor seven, and let's take a look at those pick stroke arrows. You're gonna strum down, 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 up, down, up, and you're gonna to switch to the G chord on that upstroke. So. And then I actually played the next two downstrokes after that. We can ignore the accent for now, we'll add it in later. Right away, you can see what makes this drum pattern difficult. That G comes in on an unpredictable beat. You would expect it to come in on the downstroke right before that upstroke. Maybe you're having trouble with this transition already, so let's take a second to review it. Stop this video and practice on your own and take as much time as you need to play it correctly. All right, next I want to focus on just this portion. So we left off on the G chord. We're at the end of measure one here. We're going to play down, up, then we go into the next measure and we're going to strum down up again. And on that upstroke, we're going to lift these fingers off of G and your index finger comes over to the third string for that D sus4. It's on an upstroke and then let's add two more downstrokes. Again, pause this video and practice on your own until you get it right. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the beginning and I'm going to strum uh, through all of the parts that I have shown you so far. And if you'd like to join me, I'll count you off. One, two, three, four. Three, four, again. Three, four, again. Three, four. Once you're comfortable with that and you're ready to move on, here's the next portion we're going to focus on, and it sounds like this. So we left off with the D chord, and we're going to play a downstroke, but you can see I have written an off there. That's indicating that your index finger should come off of the string. These fingers stay put. So you'll have one downstroke and then you're going to put your finger on the fourth string and play the A7 sus4 chord, and that's an upstroke. So let me back up. We were on the D. We're going to play a downstroke, and your index finger will be lifted off, and then you put it over where it goes for the A7, and that's an upstroke. So it's... And this is followed by two more upstrokes. So it's. Now you could back up a little bit and let's play the portion that we learned before this part and we'll join it to this new part. So we're coming from G to the D index finger off to the A.
And then from here, you can take it all the way back to the beginning and play through everything that you've learned so far. Again. Again. One more time. Once you're comfortable with that much, you can finish this drum pattern with this last part. So you're going down on the A7 chord, then on the up stroke, you lift your index finger off, and then another down, up. If we join this with the part that came before it, it sounds like this. If we go back a little farther, and then finally taking it all the way back to the beginning, and let me do that again, I'll tap my foot and I'll repeat it, and you can join me, I will count you in, one, two, Three, four. All right, so one final thing we want to add to this to complete it are the accents that you see right here and here and here. So on these particular downstrokes, you want to dig into the strings a little harder. And these are actually played on the back beats and it gives the uh, strum pattern more of a back beat. And it sounds like this. So if I slow that down for you from the beginning, it's down, 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 and you want to hit the strings a little harder on that down stroke. And then from there, down, up, down, up, down, down, Get to hit things a little harder there. Let's review just that much. Then if I keep going, the end of the first measure, down, up, now we're into the second measure, down, up, down, down, right there I want to accent. So end of first measure into second, from the beginning. And then, even though I don't have this marked, if you listen to the recording, it sounds like you dig into those upstrokes at the end of measure two on the A7 chord as well. And then from the beginning. All right, well, that covers everything you really need to know about the pattern. So the next step for you would be to practice it until you can get it up to tempo. So the original recording was played at 87 beats per minute. And here's what it sounds like when you play it up to full tempo.
Well, this completes my lesson. Hopefully you can now play the Wonderwall strum pattern correctly, or at least you know how it's done and you can work on putting it together and getting it up to speed over time. If you found this lesson helpful, click like and leave me some positive feedback. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below and I'll reply. Maybe this lesson is just the sort of thing you need to be working on right now. Or maybe your guitar playing needs attention in other areas. If you need help determining what you should specifically be working on to get your guitar skills in order, go to my website, guitarmusictheory.com. Answer the question I ask you about your playing, and I'll send you free custom video instruction calibrated to your current level. I'll show you what you should specifically be working on right now so that your guitar playing takes shape the way you want it to. Enroll in your free video course now at guitarmusictheory.com. You can click on the link in the video description. Well, thanks for watching. I'm Desi Serna. Before you go, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, click on the notification bell to receive alerts when new videos are uploaded, then keep playing and stay tuned for more.